Hi friend, I'm so grateful you're going with me on this forgiveness journey through the pages of my new book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. I'm here with Leah Chabai, who works on my team at Proverbs 31 yep. Ministries and has read, reread, and reread again and again yep. every word of this book. How many times do you think you've read through this book? Oh my goodness, it's a lot. Like probably 25 times and we're not, we're not even done yet so that's right at this point <laughs> that's so right we're still and do you find when you're reading it that you get new insights because you're always going through new relational dynamics or hard situations yes for sure I will even um, be underlining things and just I don't know even talking with you like I'll send you a text oh, I read this again and it's so good mm -hmm. um, so yeah definitely the Lord has been using it in my own heart over the span of this whole process so thank you for writing it absolutely that was a good answer too. think of how <laughs> awkward it would have been if you're like no I'm kind of actually bored with the message yeah, at this over point. it <laughs> <laughs> no so, I kind of set you up on that question no but thank you for yes. that very gracious answer yes I, I have Lisa it. isms in my head that I'm like oh <laughs> Yeah, Lisa said that. That's good for the situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really good. You know, I've said many times this message is not one to just read through mm -hmm. quickly. It's one to sit with Absolutely. and process over yeah. time. And my prayer really is that you'll be able to return to this as a resource, almost like a comprehensive forgiveness manual mm -hmm. when you continue to go through relationships and dynamics that require forgiveness. Yeah. So yeah. that's really our hope through this whole process of writing this book. I've received so many questions, especially through my social media channels on the topic of forgiveness. And I wanted to really take time to personally answer some of them with you mm -hmm. because I imagine maybe some of these questions will be ones that you would ask if you were sitting here with us today. Mm -hmm. I pray the things that we talk about today in this video will really just serve to add another layer of healing and help for you personally. So Leah, I'm gonna let you ask the questions yep. and I'll do my very best to bring answers. Yes. How do we identify and correct common misconceptions we've believed about forgiveness? Oh, this is a really good question Ooh. because I think part of my feelings of resistance around forgiveness was really centered around misconceptions mm -hmm. that I've had. And I think a big misconception that I had is that forgiveness and reconciliation always work together. And so one of my points you'll hear in just a minute is that we've got to untangle these ideas around forgiveness. Forgiveness is a command by God. Reconciliation, on the other hand, is very conditional. Right. And there's a lot of dynamics that feed into that. Mm -hmm. But even if you can no longer be in a relationship with the person, forgiveness is still required. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important to understand that, but also what forgiveness is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. So let me dive right into some yeah. of these points because I think this will really help clear up some misconceptions that I know I had. Yeah. So number one, forgiveness does not always fix relationships, but it does help mend the hurting heart. Mm -hmm. and. I think for me, this was a really, really big one. Uh, one of the questions that my counselor asked me right off the bat when he was helping me process the really difficult situation I walked through in my marriage, um, he asked me, Lisa, do you want to start healing? He didn't ask me, are you ready to forgive? Because I probably would have said no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how the situation was gonna turn out. Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, exactly if I would ever hear words like, I'm sorry, or I was wrong. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know the full story yet. I mean, I, the all of the trauma hadn't even played all the way out. And so I felt like, you know, maybe I was too early in the process for forgiveness. Right. But when he asked me the question, do you want to start to heal? I said, yes. And he said, well, then today's a great day to just start talking about forgiveness mm -hmm. because forgiveness is so much more for our hurting heart right. than it is about the relationship. Right. So I think that's right. really important. Forgiveness is making the decision that the ones who hurt you 
no longer get to limit you, label you, or possibly even project lies that they believe about themselves onto you. And it's really the decision that their offense will not define you mm -hmm. or confine you by the smallness of bitterness. Mm. I think that's really important. That's really good. Another misconception that I think is important to clear up, number two, forgiveness is both a decision and it's a process. And healing is always quite a journey. When you get triggered after you make the decision to forgive, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that your decision to forgive was fake. It just means that there's more work to be done. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a situation where it's like, okay, I have verbalized, I forgive this person yep. for the fact of how they hurt me. But then maybe hours, days, weeks later, something will trigger the pain of that situation mm -hmm. and all those hard feelings rush back at you yep. and you find yourself you're angry again you're frustrated again you're hurt again mm -hmm. maybe you're feeling quite emotional again mm -hmm. and you can start to wonder was my decision to forgive fake mm -hmm. did i not really mean it mm -hmm. has this ever happened to you Leah? yeah or feeling like did i make the progress that i thought i had made in moving right. past that like how is this coming back up again or maybe i'm a forgiveness failure mm -hmm. like maybe forgiveness just doesn't work yes. for me yeah that's why i think it's important to give a distinction that decision that you made to forgive for the fact of what happened, it was done in a specific moment in time, mm -hmm. and no one can take that away from you. Yeah. You're not a forgiveness failure. In addition to the decision to forgive, though, there's also the process of working through all the emotions from not just the fact of what happened, but also the impact of what happened. Mm -hmm. And that processing of the impact, what this cost you yeah. and how this affected you, that process will likely take period over, will likely take place over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. I think you, you and I were just talking earlier before we started today and I said, you know, any leaning in toward forgiveness mm -hmm is a leaning away from bitterness mm -hmm. and it's good work. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not ready to rush across the finish line right. of forgiveness, right. uh, maybe you're just walking toward it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're even stumbling toward it. Mm -hmm. And I would say, even if you're just leaning into mm -hmm. the decision to forgive, that mm -hmm. leaning toward forgiveness is a leaning away from bitterness. Right. And that is good healing work. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to rush the process. Yeah. Number three is forgiveness doesn't let the other person off the hook. It actually places them in God's hands. Forgiving the one who hurt you, it doesn't mean that you're freeing them from the consequences of their actions or even the consequences of their sin. Mm -hmm. It does mean you refuse to take the burden of taking revenge and instead you are learning to trust God that he will exercise his justice with appropriate measures of mercy, just like God is fully capable of doing. Mm. Number four, forgiveness does not justify or excuse abuse ever. Mm -hmm. While the limitless grace of God provides a way for all to be forgiven, the truth of God, it provides parameters so that wrong behavior can absolutely be addressed. Abuse is not to be tolerated mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. It is right for you to establish boundaries with equal measures of mercy and tough love. So mm -hmm. just because you forgive them does not mean you need to keep them in close proximity to you where they can continue to hurt you or abuse you. Mm -hmm. Number five, forgiveness is required by God but reconciliation is conditional. I already mentioned this one, but I think it's worth yeah. emphasizing. Mm -hmm. I agree. This was probably one of the biggest misconceptions. Mm -hmm. I thought if I couldn't repair or reestablish the relationship exactly the way that the other person might expect or the way that I hoped it would be, 
I thought that forgiveness wasn't possible if reconciliation on that level isn't possible. So right. I think untangling these misconceptions that the yes. two work together all the time, yeah. I think is important. Sometimes forgiveness can pave a way for healthy reconciliation, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But even if you cannot have reconciliation, you can have forgiveness because forgiving someone, it doesn't automatically mean that trust is immediately restored or that hard relational dynamics are instantly fixed. Reconciliation, like I said, yeah. is very dependent on two people being willing to work on the relationship. And in some cases, reconciliation, unfortunately, is simply not an option. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that forgiveness is not an option. Mm -hmm. All right, number six, forgiveness isn't an act of determination. I used to think that if I could just boss my feelings around mm -hmm. enough or muster up enough spiritual maturity or just deny my feelings, yep. that that's how you make yourself forgive. But what I learned is I really studied what the Bible says about forgiveness. Forgive is, forgiveness, it's not made possible by our determination. Forgiveness is made possible by our cooperation yeah. with what Jesus has already done. As that. God's forgiveness flows to us, then it can flow through us to other people. When I wrongly think that my ability to forgive rises and falls on just my efforts, on just my gentle feelings that may seem authentic in one minute and then turn into something that makes me feel fake in the mm -hmm. next minute, I'll never be able to authentically give the kind of forgiveness that Jesus has given me. Mm. So in reality, my ability to forgive others, it doesn't rise and fall on me. Mm. And, and my determination. It is my cooperation as I lean into what Jesus has already done, which allows his grace for me to, flowly throw, to freely flow mm. through me. And I think Ugh. that's a beautiful yes. picture. I was gonna say, that's such a relief, honestly, because it feels like, oh, I'm, do I have to do all this to actually overcome this? But the Lord's just asking us to cooperate with what he's already done, and I love that truth. That's right. And I think another point to add on to that is I must realize that I need God's forgiveness mm -hmm. in order for it to authentically flow through me. Yeah. So if I think I only need this much forgiveness, right. then I may only have this much forgiveness <laughs> yeah. to give away. Yeah. But when I throw my arms open and recognize I desperately need God's grace, I need his forgiveness to flow through me in abundance, then I'm able to let it flow through me in abundance. Mm -hmm. All right, so number seven, forgiveness is not adding on top of our pain, a misery too great to bear. It's exchanging our bound up resentment for a life-giving freedom, mm -hmm. thus making the mystery of the workings of God too great to deny. It is a complicated grace. I don't mm -hmm. want to oversimplify forgiveness, it's just not. It's a complicated grace that uncomplicates our blinding pain mm -hmm. and helps us see beautiful again. Wow, so good, thank you, Lisa. So those were seven points. If you're not taking notes, you might need to rewind and go back and write those down because those are so good. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's look at the next question that we've gotten quite a bit, and that is, since forgiveness doesn't demand reconciliation, right? Like we just talked about, why did you decide to stay and fight for your marriage, for your relationship with art? This is a great question. And it's as complicated as it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's no simple answer for this. I think really the best way for me to answer this question is that I was given the chance yeah. for reconciliation. Yeah. Um, it, there was a long process where I had to realize I could not work harder on art than art was working on art. And I have to say there was a season that it was not reasonable or responsible to stay. Just like when the ocean doesn't stay within its boundaries. The mm -hmm. ocean is beautiful and it's amazing, mm -hmm. but when it comes out with hurricane force winds, the shoreline conditions force evacuations. Yeah. And that was similar in our relationship. There were long stretches of silence and separation 
and lots of seeking of wise counsel. Mm -hmm. But then to continue the analogy, the shoreline became safe again and I had a choice. I was offered a second chance at moments of togetherness for our family and I wanted that for all of us. Mm -hmm. Simple moments that I couldn't deny that were still beautiful even in the midst of all the devastation mm -hmm. that we faced. Yeah. And I have to fully acknowledge that I wasn't making this decision alone. Mm -hmm. I had counselors and pastors that had been invested in the whole process. Yeah. There was accountability. There was time, lots of time. Mm -hmm. Nothing was rushed. Um, there were still obstacles to overcome. There were boundaries that needed to be kept and then some boundaries that needed to um, as they were safe, they needed to be just um, softened some yeah. or some even released. Yeah. Um, but over time, through the process of rebuilding, we decided that we had done enough work on each of our own sides of the street that now it was time to come back together and work on this together. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is such a process. Healing is a long journey. And I will never ever criticize another person for choices they made that were different from mine when placed in the same yeah. horror and heartbreak that I was placed in. Um, and I'll also acknowledge sometimes when it comes to reconciliation, people are not given a choice to reconcile. And I have nothing but tender love and deep, deep understanding. I don't understand why God sometimes brings chances for reconciliation in this case and then other times, God's answer for the broken-hearted prayers that someone's praying, they end in a rescue out of the relationship. Right. It's a brutal walk for us both, both those who reconcile and those who don't. So why did I stay? The only answer I can give you is I was given that chance and God settled in my heart that it was my choice mm -hmm. and I chose. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thankful, I'm yeah. really thankful. Yeah. I do love art and I know art loves me. And um, I wish with all my heart that we had not gone through this. Yeah. Um, I really do, but I'm trusting that God can still make our family beautiful and we're working really hard toward that. Mm. Wow, thank you, Lisa. I love just watching your redemption story play out. It's been an honor to be beside you during that as well. Thanks, Leah. And, you know, I think another question right behind that people yeah. may say, Lisa, do you still get scared? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I do still get scared. Healing from this kind of marriage trauma, it is not an easy way to travel, but it is possible as long as you're both willing to stay faithful to God and really go to him and um, make those vows new, mm -hmm. even the ones that were broken before. And mm -hmm. it was important for Art and I to renew our vows before yeah. God. And when two people are both willing to renew those vows and keep those vows, um, then second chances are possible. Yeah, wow. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> um, this question kind of builds off of the last one as well, but how long did it take you to be able to move past going through the motions of forgiveness and actually finding real joy in that relationship again? Such a good question because you know, sometimes when we make the decision to forgive, it takes a while for our feelings to catch yes. us. <laughs> and so I'm not saying we deny our feelings, yeah. but I'm saying because Forgiveness is both a decision and a process. We can make the decision to forgive and then walk through the process of dealing with all of the emotions and feelings that sometimes will come out in the process of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so how long did it take? Um, I think I'm still in process, yeah. honestly. Yeah. You know, are there moments of great joy? Yes. Are there still hard moments where forgiveness seems like oh, I'm still on this journey. Yeah. Yes. Um, and like I said before, do I still wish with all of my heart we hadn't walked through this? Yes. Mm -hmm. But do I see good 
that God is doing good healing work in me that I probably needed mm -hmm. this kind of healing work. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I can see good in that. Um, God didn't cause this mm -hmm. at all. It was arch choices yeah. and, you know, and, and my contributions to it as well. But I will say, you know, the joy comes in simple moments mm -hmm. where all of a sudden I'll look across our, uh, you know, across the kitchen and we'll be laughing and there just will be so much joy in a space where there once was just nothing but tears. Yeah. And it's in those small moments where I think, wow, we are making it mm -hmm. and it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you've said, the Lord has impressed upon your heart before, like this is your answered prayer, like you're living it your is. answered prayer. It is, yeah. yeah. And I, I think I prayed so long mm -hmm. for those simple moments of joy yeah. to have another shot at those. Yeah. And, um, and now I do. And of course there's other relationships where the joy from forgiveness is not because the relationship was reconciled. Right. And I think for me, when I've traded the pain of the hurt and heartbreak in a relationship that doesn't work out, when I've traded that for perspective and wisdom, mm -hmm. that the joy can be found in the perspective and the wisdom that I've gained along the way, even if reconciliation isn't possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next question, actually, we talk about, you know, forgiveness is required by God, but what does this mean for relationships that can't be restored? What does forgiveness look like in that scenario? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, I believe with all my heart that forgiveness received and given mm -hmm. is the very thing that splits this world open with the most stunning revelation of the reality of Jesus more than almost anything yeah. else. So please don't ever confuse redemption with reunion. Reunion or reconciliation, it really does require two people who are willing to do the hard work to come back together. Mm -hmm. But redemption, and this can be a redeeming moment, even if the relationship doesn't come back together, right. because redemption is just between you and God. Yeah. God can redeem your life, even if damaged human relationships don't come back together. Mm -hmm. And you and I can forgive, even if the relationship never gets restored. And it's so incredibly freeing to forgive and not have to wait on another person or people who may or may not ever be willing to talk through all of this or even work through all of this with you. Forgiveness isn't always about doing something for a human relationship, but rather about being obedient to what God has instructed us to do. Those who cooperate most fully mm -hmm. with this whole process of forgiveness are those who will dance most freely in the beauty of redemption. And what exactly is beautiful redemption? It's you accepting this exchange that God is offering. What you give up is the right to demand that the one who hurt you be made to pay you back or be made to suffer for what they've done. God will handle this. And even if you never see how God handles it, you know that he will. So you give up retaliation, you give up resentments, mm -hmm. you give up holding bitterness, which is like a fake power over mm -hmm. that person. Yeah. So you give that up, but what you get is the freedom to move on. The scenery for your life should not be just a pit of pain that that person dragged you into. Ooh. There's so much more to discover and to experience. So. When you let go of clawing your way through the muddy pit, hoping that there's some reward buried there in the pit, there's just not. Take God's hand. And as the words of forgiveness are released from your lips, it's like, it's like scattering seeds of beautiful flowers. And the mud from the pit becomes like fertile soil with such potential and before long, you'll be dancing through all that has blossomed and bloomed around you. Mm. For a while, you may still have a lot of tears that come and go, and that's okay. Freedom from unforgiveness doesn't mean instant healing for all the emotions involved, 
but it does mean that those emotions will turn into eventual compassion rather than bitterness. And you'll see truly that those who cooperate most fully with forgiveness are really those who will dance most freely in the beauty of redemption. Hmm. Thank you, Lisa. I think like just something about what you were just saying and even in this message, <clears throat> so much of this process is the hard and holy holding hands, yes. right? It's You can't have one without the other. That's there right. are really hard parts, even you answering that question. To give up all of that, it's just hard to let go of some of those things that we've been holding on to or our proof or things that we're you know, fighting for, but knowing that it allows us to have the freedom to move on like what a holy gift from the Lord, honestly. So thank you for that. Um, this question, I love this question. What do you do when you love the person, but you don't trust the person? That's hard. That is hard. Trust is not easily won. Yeah. And when it's broken, I've heard it said before, trust is the oxygen of human relationships. Mm -hmm. So when trust is broken, it can almost feel like the relationship gets so starved of the very essence it needs to survive. Yeah. My counselor, Jim Kress, taught me that trust is built time plus believable behavior. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do when you love the person but you don't trust them? Well, I think you've got to have a dynamic where someone is speaking into their life about the believable behavior, the believable behavior that needs to be present mm -hmm. in order for trust to be rebuilt. Yeah. And they may not know how to do that yeah. on their own. They may not really understand the kind of dynamics that need to take place. So probably a counselor is going to need to be involved or a good friend with a lot of experiential wisdom mm -hmm. in trust rebuilding or a pastor that has experience in this. But I think you're going to have to give it time. And I think the person who's trying to regain your trust needs to have believable behavior. Mm -hmm. And that means, for example, if trust had been broken in our relationship and I am able to communicate to you, Leah, you know, when you um, don't call me for five days in a row, it makes my brain start wondering, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. So do you have it to give? at least once a week to call me. Yeah. And if you say yes, then that can start a process of consistency of your actions that mean a lot to me, rebuilding that trust, yeah. right? And of course, I can't hold that over you or say, if you don't do this, mm -hmm. then you're a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just may mean that our relationship um, won't be able to move forward at the same pace or maybe even not at all mm -hmm. because both people have to be willing to work on it yeah. in my situation with art a big trigger was his phone and so in one of the counseling sessions my counselor asked him do you have it to give that if lisa sees you on your phone and she gets triggered by a fear or an uncertainty of what you're doing, do you have it to give without swiping anything on your phone just to show her exactly what you're working on? Or do you have it to give to give her the password? Mm -hmm. Now, I am not gonna become Investigator Sally here because yeah. that will just drive me nuts, right. right? But if I have a moment of fear and I go to Art and I ask him, you know, can I see your phone? Mm -hmm. If he's not defensive, if he's not angry, right. if he's not resistant, and he shows me, and I can see the believable behavior, right. that he's not doing something that would hurt me, mm -hmm. then that becomes a moment of a little block put in place of rebuilding trust. Right. And over time, as more and more believable behavior gets put into place, more trust can be formed. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? No. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. It's a lot easier to keep trust in a relationship mm -hmm. um, than it is to rebuild trust after it's been broken. Yeah. So it's not easy, but it is possible. Yeah, that's really helpful. And thank you for sharing from even your own personal experience with, with working through this with art. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, here is our final question, and I actually think this might be in the top like three of the ones that you've probably been mm -hmm. asked, but how do we receive someone else's forgiveness? Mm. 
That's a complicated question because, you know, sometimes we won't want them to put us in the position of saying, I forgive you, because it almost forces us to admit that what we did was wrong, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so when someone offers us a gift of forgiveness, we need to remember it is quite a gift. And while it doesn't ensure reconciliation, it is a gift of peace that starts to settle the debt of what has happened. Mm -hmm. Like your actions cost me something. Right. And so when I forgive you, I'm canceling that debt. I'm not gonna hold it over your head right. anymore. And it really is quite a gift. I find it interesting that the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, it uses the word debts in referencing what needs to be forgiven. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. My counselor uses this image of debts to challenge us to ask ourselves, what have my actions cost the one I hurt? Because there's a big difference between a $5 debt and a $5 million debt. Mm -hmm. Both require that the one who was hurt by our actions make the decision to forgive. But we have to remember the emotional repair will require them to forgive us over and over as the emotional impact hits them at different times and in different ways. The bigger the cost of our actions to them, the longer the emotional healing will take. Mm. So as we receive someone's decision to forgive, realize that their emotional healing over what happened will not happen at the same time that they utter those words, I forgive you. This doesn't make their decision to forgive any less sincere. It just means now they're entering into the process of emotional forgiveness, which according to an expert that I've really enjoyed reading mm -hmm. his in just vast research mm -hmm. on this, it's Dr. Everett Worthington. He says it involves replacing the negative emotions with positive feelings like compassion, sympathy, and empathy. So here's some important things to consider when receiving someone's forgiveness. Number one, even if the one we hurt isn't asking for restitution, is there something we can do to make right this situation? Is there something that we told somebody else about this person that we need to untangle? Is there a way to make some part of it right? Yeah. Number two, if we took something or broke something, can it be replaced? How can I make this right? And even if they didn't ask for an apology, how can we make sure that they know we acknowledge what we did was wrong? I think two big parts of this are humility and honesty. Those are wonderful postures to take when receiving someone's forgiveness. Next, just because they have forgiven doesn't mean that trust is instantly rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And obviously we just talked about right. this, but one of the best ways Art helped me believe that his apology was sincere was when I get triggered with fear or anxiety or uncertainty during this long process mm -hmm. of rebuilding trust, instead of getting defensive, he'll say with understanding, I, I get it. I understand, of course, you'll, you're still hurting mm -hmm. over this. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do you want me to sit with you? Do you want me to listen to you? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to speak into this? And it's yeah. just very tender. On the other hand, if he were to get super defensive or to say to me, you know, you should be healed from this or how much longer are we going to have to go through this or why do you keep digging up old wounds or I'm sick and tired of you reminding me of how this hurt you. Mm -hmm. That suddenly does a lot of damage mm -hmm. and actually destroys some of the trust that we're working so hard to rebuild mm -hmm. in our situation. But I love it when art just gives me room to heal. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best ways that I know I'm safe enough to receive his forgiveness and that his his apology is sincere or mm -hmm. receive his apology so that you know my forgiveness can be sincere. Yeah. Another thing to remember is while the other person can forgive us without requiring our repentance, that doesn't mean that repentance isn't still required by God. Mm -hmm. I think we need to remember that, that God does want us to turn completely away from the actions that right. caused hurt and pain. Right. 
And then number four, as I read recently in an article by Jeremy Myers, he says, God wants us to repent of our sin so that we can be liberated from it and released from its addictive power in our lives. Sin damages us and God reveals sin to us, not so that he can threaten us with hell if we do not confess and repent, but so that we can, by agreeing with him, have that sin confessed and we can take steps to move in the opposite direction that's repentance and that we can be released that's forgiven mm -hmm. from any sin that holds sway over our lives i think now that we've experienced the gift of forgiveness from someone we've wronged or hurt we should be all the more eager to give forgiveness to those who hurt or wronged us mm -hmm. and i think the bible talks so much about yeah. this but I think when we have been forgiven by another person, we need to look at it that we've now been almost given this chance to become a forgiveness ambassador yeah. to other people yeah. and make sure that we are freely giving away the grace that we have so much been given. Mm -hmm. And really that's the principle of what makes forgiveness possible in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Jesus, gave his very life yeah. so that we could be forgiven. Some of the last words that Jesus uttered was, Father, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they don't know what they do. Right. And when Jesus taught us to pray, the bulk of the prayer is about forgiveness. I mean, Jesus gave his very life for the message of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so I think the more that we embrace it, the more that we receive it from the Lord, the more eager we need to be to give it away. And I've often said, and I'll say it as we wrap up our time to get today, together today, um, the very best time to forgive is before you're ever offended. I think that's why in the Lord's Prayer, isn't it beautiful how it's supposed to be a daily prayer? Yeah. And it's like, it almost seems like it happens at the beginning of the day. Yeah. Establishing our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, which makes me feel like he's setting the tone for his day. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, forgive us our debts mm -hmm. as we forgive those who have created a debt against us us yeah. so it's almost pre-deciding mm -hmm. the atmosphere i want to set in my life yeah. in my day yeah. in my whole attitude is forgiveness mm -hmm. so i'm going to pre-decide to already forgive before i'm even offended mm -hmm. isn't that beautiful yeah, so that. the best time to forgive is before we're ever offended yeah but the next best time is right now mm -hmm. i love that well, I know that's a lot to process <laughs> together. We've covered a lot today. <laughs> but I do pray that this time that we've shared has been really helpful as we've discussed the answers to some really important questions. Yeah. Thank you for putting those questions together, yeah. Leah, and for um, just giving us a space here to discuss these yeah. things that I'm sure many people have been asking. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for reading and living out this message of forgiving what you can't forget. It's made such a big difference in my life, and I pray it will do the same for you.